Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, together with my co-host, Mark Rohn, at just statewide news service, jbiztechvalley.com. And as you can see, now columnist for the Jewish press. Yep, I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community or doesn't, as the case may be. <laughs> and uh, when you talk about government, you talk about Judaism, you got to talk about Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett, All right. who's both <laughs> There's Jewish, a segue. <laughs> yeah, who's both Jewish and a member of the government. So anyway, welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you very much. Thanks I'm, for having I'm, me. I'm working on my segues. This is the best one I've done so far. So anyway, Dee Dee, uh, well, you know, this very, it's really a pleasure to have you here. You're one of my favorite legislators. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. And Thank you. And I've been watching you from the sidelines for, since you've been elected. And when were I, you elected? I was elected in 2012 in a special election yeah. to finish the term of Mark Molinaro, who was then elected to the Dutchess County as Dutchess County uh, executive. Right. And so it went from being a Republican seat to being a Democrat seat. And I'm the first Democrat to represent that area for really? the most part. What is well, your area? Eileen it's Hickey. a big district. Eileen Hickey, I think, represents She had a small part of it, part but, of not it the but that's, not the Columbia County part. But that's the last Democrat who even comes close to uh, right. representing it. So I just thought... It's, a, it's a very <laughs> big district. It's, from seven, it's 70 miles north and south and about 40 miles east and west. The southern end is the very southern tip of the town of Poughkeepsie. The northern end is a very um, northern end of the town of Ghent. So part of the village of Chatham that's in Ghent is the northern end. And part of the village of Wappingers Falls that's in the town of Poughkeepsie, not Wappingers, is the southern end. And then basically goes from the river to the it's state the border east side. The east with side. a few towns gerrymandered out. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have the city of Poughkeepsie, but I you have, have the yes, town. Yes, exactly. This, the town, not the city. And I don't have... Red Hook or Rhinebeck, but I have the towns all around them. So it's yes. And well, I, then and you you don't represent the uh, Rhinebeck the Rhinebeck Jewish Center. I do not. No, yeah. That's Rabbi Hecht. Exactly. So. No, I don't have any of his or the the JCC because it's in uh, in the city of Poughkeepsie. And who's uh, yeah? But who's the uh, legislator who represents Rhinebeck? Uh, Kevin Cahill represents Rhinebeck, and Frank Scartados represents the city of Poughkeepsie. Okay, well, so you and bo oh, they're both Democrats, so you mm -hmm. must all get along regardless oh, yeah. of the be Absolutely. territory. We get, you know. we get along, yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's just hard, you know, when constituents are reaching out and, and they, you know, they know one or the other. It's, it's kind of like, well, can you help me with? So we'd be happy to help you, but it's actually not my district. You know, they have to. Have well, to I would tell everyone that. that they should go on the assembly website, put in their address, and they could find out who their legislator is. Sure. And they could do it that really way on the homepage. Yeah, they That's have very it interesting. put in, they, they have it uh, broken out by, uh, in, not just by zip code, but by yeah, street. Address. It has to be by street, and it yeah. can't be by mailing address, because a lot of the, you know, in the area is rural, so there's post office boxes that are not where right. they actually pay their their yeah, exactly. basic mm -hmm. taxes. It's where, you know, it, it's it's where they get their mail. And that's it. So we ha I have people who are, <laughs> Living in one town, um, you know, uh, in a totally different school district, and have mm -hmm. you know their mail in a third town. It's just, you know, it's it's like the town of Gildalin. The town of Gildalin is the same way. And, is it? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't. So know it's that. very strange. Anyhow, so you are on the you're chair of the subcommittee on regional tourism development. You're members of like seven, eight other committees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you are like all over the map. No one, you know, you're just so busy running for all these committees. But I'm, they... I'm busy. And, you know, the interesting thing is that there are committees that I'm not on that would be equally relevant to my district. Right. For example, um, I'm not on education at this point, but I have, you know, all are part of 15, 16 school districts in my district. Really I so have, wrong. you know, almost two dozen libraries. I'm not on the library committee. I have five institutions of higher learning. I'm not on higher ed. So I mean, it's a, it's a very rich district with a lot of very interesting. I have the FDR library in my district. Mm -hmm. and the So historic. Very important historic sites. Right. Um, the uh, Culinary Institute of America, mm -hmm. important gastronomics. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have Olana, so, so there's food cultural safe, sites. Food, there's a committee on food safety and nutrition. Um, a task force. A task force, I right. think, yeah, that so Ellen Jaffe has. That might be something that you could. Yeah, no, I have. Well, the regional tourism development was something that I had had thought about and, and asked the speaker if we could create that subcommittee because of the it's importance. A new committee? Yes, oh, I'm, the first, I'm the first uh, chair sure. of it. 
And how many people are on that committee? I well, the subcommittees are, you know, operate in a in a different way than than right. the than the standing committees. So basically, as a chair, you you know, you have the opportunity to do what you want with it and shape it. So we're working on a on a couple different in initiatives, including um, a really great one with uh, state parks and our community colleges, which is all about training the next generation of artisans and craftspeople to both work on these historic sites, because that's one of the biggest issues, is the getting people who actually know traditional crafts and know how to build stone walls or mm -hmm. um, do traditional masonry or work on slate roofs or wooden windows or things like that. And that's one of the issues, not just in these sites, but in all our communities that have old houses and old offices and old buildings. So we want to really develop this, the, this next generation to have these skills, but also to be able to support their families as running businesses with these um, with these skills. So it's kind of a developing a business and um, you know and these trades at the same time, and working with our community colleges and working with the state historic uh, and preservation office, SHPO. When to do you that. say regional, is you care, you're only about your region? No, or it's or looking at regions as kind of a. But you're and my, concerned I'm, with all kinds of regions. Sure, and I'm, you know, but our obviously my first focus is going to be on the Hudson Valley, which is what you know my region is, and it's. But a there's the North huge, Country, there's Finger Lakes, there's sure. Southern Tier, there's Western New York, there's the Northern Tier, oh, well. there's you know Upper Hudson Valley. There's but tourism is there. gaining, though. Huge. I mean, New it's York an enormous, state is. A, and it's an it's an enormous uh, economic driver, not just in New York City, and and we have in you know just outside of my region because it's of my district because it's the city of Poughkeepsie but the walkway of the, over the Hudson has been a phenomenal really? tourist attraction e unbelievable way you have to go on you have to way exceeded what anybody was expecting of it yeah I also didn't think okay you made a walkway you know. it's, no. it's <laughs> extraordinary yeah no it's really? great and you know in the after just as an example of the you know intersection of media and, and history you know, the FDR library reopened a year ago with much you know updated very interesting pro scheduled programming and and technology the but Martin, once you have to go there when the it when the Ken Burns when the Ken Burns um, sh um, PBS mini series, mini series on the on the Roosevelt's came out it increased the uh, attendance at the FDR library like, phenomenally in Val Kill the Eleanor Roosevelt's home so all of these are amazing tourist destinations and when people come in, then they stay, and then they eat in a you know in a diner in a restaurant, and they you know go to the movies, and it's been it's been huge. They come in the fall, and they buy apples, and they you know it's just it's it all feeds on itself. It's actually, been great. I was at, I was at Valkyl. They give out awards every year. Yes, uh, Queen Noor was there from yes, Jordan. Yes, I was there that year too. And yeah. Joan Rivers uh -huh. was there. And yeah, I no, they to meet her the, and, those Valkyl Awards are really wonderful. They yeah. they really do get an interesting cross section. So, of and then uh, with FDR, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a member of the Knights of Pythias, mm -hmm. and uh -huh. we have the original documentation when FDR signed that uh, the uh, declaration that he was going to be a member of the Knights of Pythias, and he took the he went through the ranks uh, for the to become a knight. Uh, in the uh, White House, hmm. oh, and that's interesting. back then it was easier to get into the White House than it is today. But there were some people from Poughkeepsie who knew him mm -hmm. that want, that were invited down to the White House, and he went through the allegedly, you know, went through the because he was in a wheelchair, <coughs> so uh -huh. he went through the ranks, and they gave him the, they made him a, a Pythian, and the folks at the library did not know this, and I gave them the original documentation. And you should see this archivist. It was like I made his day. It was like Hanukkah for him. Was like, That's <laughs> it wonderful. Was, it was That's amazing. Uh -huh. He says, of all the things we knew about Roosevelt, we didn't know he was a knight and member of the Knights of Pythias. That's really interesting and, and that they didn't like, know that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, all right, calm down now. A new, it's okay. a new, a new bit on the story. Yeah, that's you know? great. <laughs> so I added to that. So let me just go through the other uh, committees that you're on. Tourism, Parks, Arts, and Sports Development. That's one. That's yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Aging Committee, Agriculture Committee, the Economic Development, Job Creation, Commerce, and Industry is one. Uh, Mental Health Committee, Veterans Affairs, and the Legislative Women's Caucus. Well, you talk about each one separately. You just rattled off a lot of issues. You know, we got to have her back seven times because yeah, each know, one of these each one's well, a major issue. <laughs> each one of these there, we could talk about. They're all important hour. issues. Yeah. Very important. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to you know like agriculture, aging, I mean. 
you know, we, I mean, there seems to be a link with every one of these except for mental health. <laughs> really, mental health is probably the most... Arch, overarching? Yes, thing. I think, you know, I mean, I think we are seeing on so many different fronts how <laughs> mental health is one of the, probably the most profound health issues of our time, and it's not gotten the recognition and the attention that it deserves. Because, well, because uh, a number of people, or it's how much money is... I think, I think the recognition of what mental health is. I mean, I was thinking about this the other day because, we, um, you know, obviously all the gun stuff, they're talking about that, all the returning veterans are talking about mental health. Um, we had a, a forum yesterday in, in Hudson about uh, children of incarcerated parents mm -hmm. and the impact on kids. I mean, our you know, <coughs> kids today, if you're dealing with, um, you know, a, a parent who's in prison for, or, you know, even been arrested and is being held, the impact that that has on kids. And kids, you know, go to school, they're expected to just behave normally. And <coughs> those kinds of things have enormous impact on their yeah, mental sure well, well-being. And, and so, you know, I think we don't even look at, we don't look at mental health as um, an issue that we, the way we look at, at you know, physical health in terms of um, preventive care, understanding of what all the different ramifications are. There's, I think, a lot to mental health that we haven't begun to address. You can't see it under a microscope, so to speak. So exactly. person's walking down the street, oh, he looks good. You don't know if he's depressed. No. You don't know if he's you know, under stress. You don't, you don't know if she's you know, in postpartum mm -hmm. depression. I mean, there's so many things like that. that people How, uh, the SAFE Act bill that was voted on in a couple, few years ago, is that separate and apart from mental health issues with that have to deal with guns, or do you see that it was connected and would help? I think the issues around <laughs> guns and mental health um, are are complicated. I mean, I think we have seen, mm -hmm. unfortunately, in many of these mass shootings that the and it's usually a young white male in these most of these cases is struggling with some sort of a mental disturbance, um, disorder, I don't know what you, you know, they, they aren't necessarily the classic, it's not schizophrenia, it's not, you know, um, psychotic, it's not those things that we normally think about as mental health, but that's exactly my point, is that there are so many, the range, the spectrum of people struggling with mental illness or disorders is so broad that, you know, we haven't begun to address that. And I think that lumping mental health or people with mental illness as you know one category is really problematic and you can't people with mental illness are more likely to be the victims than the uh, perpetrators of of a lot of of this kind of gun violence but even when you you know when you look at what's happening on our streets i mean most of these people are <coughs> you know have dealt with childhood uh, issues where it's poverty or, or drug in their communities or violence in their own communities. So this is what they've lived with. So, I mean, all of those things, I think, are, are important mental health issues. What are issues. the answers, people? I'm just throwing out to you. I don't have a position. Is just that of institutionalizing more people. They okay. used to institutionalize people. and It's definitely not the mm -hmm. way to go. I think, I think much more understanding and much more recognition of what the impact of things, well, it's things like PTSD. I mean, it's one, you recognize it if it's, you know, you, you've, it's been a soldier whose, you know, platoon was blown up or was in a, you know, in a vehicle that got blown up. I mean, that, and is coming back home. You, you know, it's pretty clear that to have post-traumatic stress syndrome from something like that is, you know, is, is, is clear to somebody. But if you have a child who, grew up with gunshots outside their door, you know, every every night when they went to sleep and they're a sensitive child that was, you know, that that where this impacted them in, you know, in a really substantive, profound way, they're, you know, they're gonna be struggling with mental health issues just oh, as sure. a result of that. And that's post-traumatic stress syndrome too. I mean, I think, you know, having, we were talking about this in relation to the um, parents being kids of, you know, in a family, if a there's a raid on a house or in a you know in an apartment building, and a bunch of the people are dragged off in in um, handcuffs. For those kids that are watching this, no matter what their age, that's got to be a traumatic experience. Sure. So you know, I think that that we don't really um, recognize what the psychological and and emotional impact of so many things is on people, and that's what mental health really is all about. So so when I talk about the safe act. Would you have voted the same way, regardless of the connection with mental illness? 
I, you know, I'm not really sure what your question is. I, you know, I would vote the same way because personally I would have done anything to, as a mother to ensure that no other parent had to bury a child with, as a result of gun violence. And that was something that I, um, you know, that, that, that I felt was why I voted. I don't really you understand what favor, you're saying. You voted in favor of this. Say I, I did. Yes, yeah. I did. And so it was a big issue in my district. It is. I have yeah. a lot of pushback. I've, you know, I've, there have been websites with me in the, in, you know, targeted. in crosshairs yeah. as a result of my wow. vote. That's scary. <laughs> But I uh, yeah, but, but what I, over here, especially what I was, upstate New York. What yeah. I was thinking of was really just when you brought up early, you know, in the very beginning about the guns and mental illness. And the first thing I think of when you mentioned that was the SAFE Act. And then, you know, with mental illness and people and, and the things that we, we've read about. I mean, it seems well, like. People that are mentally it seems ill are like not the, supposed to have a gun. That's so well, new. But that's I what mean, I'm saying. The people who get the guns. Are not the law-abiding citizens. I mean, they're the. Well, ones I think who most of the people, many of the people who have committed these young men who have committed the most recent um, of these um, terrible mass killings, have had guns legally. Really? They and they yeah. were in their family, or they were, you know, not yeah. all of them, but most of them. Okay, so. Yeah, and you were saying mental health, veterans affairs, uh, and aging. Mental but, health issues are really important in, but for veterans in, and for yeah. aging. So agriculture, economic development, and tourism, I think, are three connected mm -hmm. areas also, because the more we farm, the more economic development. I got to tell you a quick story. Paul Tonko mm -hmm. told me this one time and said it in his speech. When most people think of New York State, they think of the bright lights on Broadway, the skyscrapers of Manhattan, and the uh, Statue of Liberty. <laughs> he, says, he says, let me tell you what the real New York State is. The silos are our skyscrapers, the bright lights in the milking barn at 5 a.m. are the bright lights of New York, and the liberty to farm one's own land is the liberty of New York State. And I've all, for 25 Go years Paul. I've been repeating uh -huh. this. Okay. Go Paul, that was, you know? yeah. Uh -huh. And that's so poetic, and it's such a picture of what New York State really is that I just had mm -hmm. to uh, relay that to you, you know, because you're on all three committees. Yeah, no, this, I am very passionate about the farms and the agriculture in our district and the, the products that are growing out of that. We have um, so many young farmers who are moving up to the area and really, starting. Really, it's a young person. We have really, a, they we, say the you know, people don't want to go into No, the we have a lot of young farmers who are moving to the, to the Hudson Valley who want to be farming. The biggest obstacle for them is um, access to land because it's so expensive. But they have a lot of that. And we also have a lot of people who come up to the area to start um, craft breweries or, or distilleries or, you know, or cideries. And is that part of agriculture now? Oh, absolutely. Of course it is. It's not part of alcoholism? <laughs> <laughs> I think if people are abusive of the, just, this, it is. But yeah, no, it's absolutely. I mean, where do you think, where do you think the, you know, the hops, th no. the, hops <laughs> the grapes, the, right. you know, the apples, the, right. it's all. So it's, it's, it's these agriculture are, and it's economic development. Absolutely. You know, it's all there and then it brings in the tourism. So it brings and it's through. yeah, and they're you know, and <laughs> it's creating jobs. It's all good. I was I, I joke, I jest. Anyhow, uh, you had legislation that was signed into law about uh, supporting older farmers. Could you tell us congratulations on that? Well, we yeah, we had we have um, had two bills. Um, one kind of they're they're kind of bookends, supporting younger farmers and supporting older farmers because um, we want to be sure that the industry is carried on to the next generation, and um, the average age of a farmer in New York is, in the country is about 57, and um, there has to be a mechan mechanism in place for transitioning for the farmers to work as long as they want to, but when they're ready to, you know, to not be out there milking every, you know, in the middle of the night, as you say, or as Paul Tonko said, mm -hmm. um, they, um, they, they are, you know, they need to be able to plan and not just sort of one day say, okay, enough. Um, and, and that's where access to land and ways to transition land is, you know, is really important. So, so we've what, been working. what sort of support does this bill give to older farmers? It, gives, it, it sets up uh, some resources for them. So if they're, you know, when they get to the point where they're thinking about transitioning, that the state has resources available to them. Such as, I don't know. You know, just, you know, documents um, get, help them network and to, to get to, you know, certain, if they, they need to be partnered with some younger farmers who are, you know, who, who are interested, matched with younger farmers, oh, okay. um, access to, um, uh, 
you know, different kinds of programs that you can might. Tell I didn't read the bill. That's why I'm asking you. I should have. But uh, it was... it's, it's you know it's really to be there to. It's part of you know a lot of, of times it's uh, this legislation is about uh, just shining a spotlight on issues that we want to be sure that the state and the local community the start paying attention. Is growing in New York State. It's growing. Did you mean that pun? <laughs> growing. Okay. <laughs> it is growing in New York State. It is. Yes, it's a huge industry in New York State. Yeah, Mark Weiss says, you know, agriculture is one of you. That's it's I the, quote you. You could uh, quote Paul Tanko. I quote Mark. It's yeah. definitely yes. You it's think one Wall of, Street, New York State. It, no, it's Wall Street it's, is our number one we, industry. Tourism is our number two. We and and we are you know we are in the top three in a number of different apples and and other um, products yeah. that we grow here in New York State. It's we're we're. Huge. I mean, we're the number one, I think, Greek yogurt producers in the country. So it's I'm the, so proud of the state we, for what it offers like that. Well, and we have actually, we're working on an initiative in another initiative in Columbia County to really develop the goat industry, both for as goat a cheese. for goat yeah. cheese, but also, you know, some of our um, other ethnic communities really like goat meat. So, you know, Great. you have an opportunity mm -hmm. to develop a new livestock, a new whole new industry here in the state. And, and in my district, we have a, um, a French goat cheese producer, one of the biggest in, in the country, I mean, in the world, that's interested in doing, they've bought the name Hudson Valley Creamery and they want, right now they've been importing the cheese curd and they wanna be able to have local goats produce the milk so that they can do the, the local, make the local cheese from, from mm -hmm. Hudson Valley and New York State goats. So, that's like a whole new industry opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's this place on Route 82, Jojo's Pizza, mm -hmm. and right in the town of Taconic. Right. And he puts, you know, goat cheese and all go sort of goat products in his refrigerator there, and it's just amazing. It's how, delicious, yeah. It's you know, all and great it's all stuff. local. And it's, you know, and then yeah, you we have, have so many great local producers mm -hmm. of, uh, of cheese and, and jams and... Um, and on the Taconic, the Taste New York Right, kiosk full of that's stores, there, full, and right. full, full of the goat. Mm -hmm. products and so we just need to really have more goats that can produce milk here in New York State so that we it's don't their them. meat too I mean right they, exactly you, you have it for tzatziki or you mm -hmm. have it for the the, um, the Greek sandwiches you know I was in Cyprus once so I, but I see that this is yeah a, goat goat, che goat meat is yeah. very popular yeah. so uh, how many other bills have you gotten past this year? Or? Oh gosh, I don't. Uh, just approximately. I, mean, uh, um, I think we've been we've been quite successful. We yeah. I think we had about eight or ten, yeah. maybe even more passed in this past year. We did you know we did very well. I mean, one of the ones I'm most proud of, um, which was uh, the year before, was the bill um, supporting Lyme disease patients and their doctors and ensuring that they can prescribe what they feel is in the best interest of the patient without being harassed by regulatory agencies. So that was, it, that's a big issue really? in my district and, and throughout the state is, is we are, you know, we're one of the top Lyme disease states, or, you know, Lyme we're, and other tick-borne well, diseases. Governor Pataki had Lyme disease and he really uh, shone, shined a light on that whole issue. So that's so, in yeah. the, you know, the Hudson Valley has unfortunately been one of the it's hotbeds. after Lyme, Connecticut, Exactly, right? yeah, which is not that far. Yeah. Um, you said that uh, you had a bill here that requires each violator of Buster's Law to register his or her name and address with the Division of Criminal Justice Services. What's this Buster's is, Law? Yeah, this is a challenging. Law. This is a challenging bill. We're we're still working on this, and you know we had introduced it, uh, a bill, a version of the bill um, a it's couple years ago. Animals, it's a right? it's a yeah it's an anti animal. I mean Buster's Law is is a, is. Um, you know, against animal abusers. But here's the challenge. The challenge is, is that county by county, they are, you know, this information is, is kept. So if, if an abuser goes from one county where he's no longer available to adopt or buy uh, a dog or a cat or uh, animals and goes to another county, there's no way for the people in that county to know what his past is, what his history no is. Central registry. There isn't, and 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 there's some you know there's some issues with registry because basically, what our bill you know had has asked for is that people self-register, which is like what a sex abuse registry does, but it that hasn't worked so well either. So I think it you know it's something we're we're trying to figure out the best way because we want. To, I mean, there really are 
serial abusers, and there's a you know there's a terrible legacy of, of you know of, of animal abuse and. Um, they also say that people who start with animal abuse eventually abuse people. Exactly, it's a gateway. Exactly. To, yeah. Uh, no. If you have no, uh, that's a put of idea from the Jewish view that we are Jewish and um, uh, Judaism is always on the forefront as far as I'm concerned of humanity and ethics. And thousands of years ago, it's actually one of the commandments is not to get sar balichaim in Hebrew, giving pain to an animal, surely not to a human being, but mm -hmm. that's. That not such a big news, obviously, to people. Right, but so you can't hurt people. But. but to have that value and to be able to actually support it in you know legally is it is it's it's yeah. turning out to be more challenging than we would have thought. But, Interesting. Uh, What's this uh, bill that says uh, relates to prorating a veteran's exemption if such veteran moves within the same county? Yeah, this what is sort of an exemption. Are we talking about? Um, this was tax exemptions, oh. and it was you know had to do with. Um, just think changing um, locations within the same county. So it sounds like a paperwork. It, type yeah, of thing. it is a lot. Sometimes the legislation is that. So, oh. but we're you know we're we're very. Did you have um, a constituent could, come to you? Yes, and we're say, very committed yeah. to trying to help <coughs> ensure that um, that our veterans have the access to all the rights and to and and um, opportunities that are available to them. And sometimes they're just our as you say, paperwork or other sort of, you know, regulatory things that get in the way. And, it, you know, and one of the issues, and the governor has just vetoed this uh, for the second time, is this issue of, um, you know, different conflicts that, if, that, that governor, that, um, that veterans of some conflicts are entitled to certain things, but it's, in, it's legislatively written that only certain, you know, what, what, what conflicts are included, and so other conflicts are if they were well, not. World wars, you mean? No, well, but I mean, there's lots of. That's the whole point. Is it's mm. way more than world wars. I mean, no, we're talking about not. people who were, you know, in the Balkans or in Afghanistan or mm. in other. They say or, Korea is a conflict. They say Korea. It's not a Korean war. It was a Korean conflict. That's what I've heard. <laughs> so you know, but there are different. So yeah. you're talking about these conflicts with that weren't. The, Declarations of war, right? Exactly. But we're still, we were still fighting right. overseas. Right. Or okay. people were on, you know, are as we've seen in the war of terror. You don't even have to. You can be stationed in a place that's, you know, that it's a high risk area where there isn't necessarily a, you know, a, a named conflict yeah. going on. But you're, you know, you can still be the victim of terror. So it's a, you know, a terrorist the, attack. And why did the governor veto that? Because it 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 had um, it has financial implications that he says should be addressed in the budget. So hopefully it will be addressed in the budget. Seems that's the catch-all when he wants to take credit for something. <laughs> it's, you know. It should be addressed in the budget. <laughs> so, um, and then you have, uh, are, are, you, uh, ha are you pleased and comfortable now in the assembly uh, with the way things are going and oh, how yes. things are, you, know, you, you have no, uh, do, do you have things that you want to do now, now that you've gotten your feet wet over the past three years? That, you, know, you, you know, you have a vision of what direction you want your legislative career to go into. Well, I'm, you know, I am very, as I said, very passionate about my district, and as you know, really yeah. being an advocate and a voice for what's a very diverse district. I really, you know, there's a lot going on in, in my district, and, um, and so that's my priority. Because you're a longtime Hudson Valley resident. I mean, I and think my, you know, and my district, as we said earlier, has yeah. not necessarily had majority representation that's right. for a very long time. So to, you know, to be able to educate my colleagues. Um, and, you know, the Hudson Valley is kind of a bridge between upstate and, and downstate. And, um, you know, in some ways, I, I see that as my role to remind my New York City colleagues that, their constituents are being fed by my constituents, who are farmers, mm -hmm. who travel down to the um, to New York City on a regular basis to both supply restaurants and and farmers markets and and you know those are really important. Where mm -hmm. it's a symbiotic relationship, we need each other. Now I um, it's I always tell people I go through a metamorphosis around Putnam County when I'm driving. I have a different way of driving north of Putnam, and I have a different way of driving south of Putnam, <laughs> just because of the traffic and how aggressive you have to be mm -hmm, when you're mm -hmm. getting close to the city. So. Well, once you get you know above, <laughs> once you get into Dutchess County, into the rural area, it's kind of like 
your shoulders drop yeah. and you take an exhale and <laughs> it's beautiful and you you know you enjoy it right now especially the colors are oh, so beautiful wonderful yes so yeah it is it's all right nice. so i think we're out of time but you're such a good guest at um Didi bear you're doing incredible good work for well, thank the you. people of your region but of new york state too continue with good work and with success and good health thank yes. you very much. much continued success thank you thank you very much thanks for having me